We mentioned that the uh, joint probability distributions completely specify the relationship uh, of the probabilities between variables. And we talked about an example of a test for a disease that had 99% accuracy. This actually means uh, two things. It means, first of all, that the probability of the test being positive given that you have the disease is 99%. But it also means the probability of the test being negative if you don't have the disease is 99%. And that is not a trivial thing uh, to say uh, because there could be a test, theoretically, that is very, very good at identifying people who have the disease and coming out positive, but uh, as a result it's also kind of um, not very sensitive and it has a high probability of people who don't have the disease also coming out as positive. And this is uh, often called the specificity of the test versus the sensitivity of the test. So the sensitivity is, um, is this one here, and the, um, the sensitivity of it, sorry, the specificity of it is this probability here. In our case, it's the same, it's a symmetric situation. And we were asking, what is the probability that we're really interested in? It's the probability if you came out positive from the disease of actually being sick. And that is not 99%. Because as we mentioned, um, because of the base rule, is that this probability is actually uh, proportional to the probability that we know, which is the probability of coming out positive if you have the disease but times the probability, the marginal probability of having the disease in general. <coughs> and this factor is a factor that we know nothing about. And it could be very low. Uh, another way to think about this is that we only have two data points. So we only have two pieces of information. Um, this and this. And the joint probability, which is what we need to, to completely specify Everything has three degrees of freedom, so we need three pieces of information to fully make inference about this. If we think about it in a frequentist uh, sort of perspective, um, what these two numbers, the 0 0.99 mean, yes, let's add some labels to this table here. So this would be um, the, the test is positive, and this would be the test is negative, and this would be you're sick and you're healthy. So what this means is, given that you have the disease. So this slice here, um, we know that the number here is 99 times bigger than the number here. We also know that if you are healthy, so we're talking about this slice here, the number here is 99, point, 99 times bigger than the number here. We don't know how big they are compared to each other, um, we just know that, that this is, so if we, for example, call this, um, call this x, this is 99 times x. If we call this q, and this is, this is not a, q is not a good idea, call this w, sorry, if we call this w, then this is 99 times w. So where does this uh, marginal probability then come in? If we think about it in a frequentist uh, point of view, again, I'm going to erase these values here. So the marginal probability here um, means what is the overall probability of me being sick? Um, so the probability that would be the sum of this and this. And we can write it here, this is P of being sick, uh, versus the, the marginal probability of being healthy, which would be 1 minus P of being sick. So, again, imagine this is a very, very rare disease. So what this means is that in here, um, we have very few, uh, very few um, events, 
And here we have 99 times more events, but there's still kind of very few compared to what's going on on this side of the board. Uh, so here we would have, we could have a whole lot of events here. And here we have 99 times more than this. Um, but still, this side completely overshadows this side. So if you actually come out positive when you're not looking at this row, the probability of you being sick is still very small because of the uh, incredibly small amount of pieces overall on this side and as a result also in this, um, in this part of the, of the probability distribution. So again, this could be here we could be talking about two single events and here we would have 198 events but because it's so rare we would actually have you know, 100,000 people who, who would be identified as positive even though they're healthy because we have um, 9,900,000 people who are healthy and who would be correctly identified as negative. So the fact that you did get a positive result on your test still makes it unlikely for you to be sick. So somebody asked me what happens if I know that the person and they were testing was in an area where the disease occurs. Let's say they were bitten by mosquitoes you know, or they were in an area where this occurs. Wouldn't this make the probability, um, the marginal probability of being sick larger? Um, and the answer is yes, because in fact, we're adding another piece of evidence. And the, and the, the way we can think about this is that we have an additional variable, which now makes this not a two by two distribution but a two by two by two cube distribution. And we'd have sort of the front cube here, which would be visited the mosquito infested area, and we have the back cube here, which would be did not visit mosquito infested area. If we compare the front slice of the cube, in this case the probability of sick people to healthy people would be larger, so we would shift a little bit of this weight around. Whereas on the back side of the cube, it would be even more pronounced that there's going to be um, many more healthy people than sick people. And so, in fact, knowing whether you were or you weren't in, a, in an area where there were mosquitoes would influence the marginal probability and therefore would influence also the conditional probability of you being sick given that the test was correct. So if you think about it a little more formally, we would say that we still have this uh, question of, am I sick, given that it's positive, it's still proportional to the question of the test result being positive when you're sick, which is still 99% times this. But this value here would be um, simply larger. Um, when we think about Bayesian inference inside of this system, and we think about this new variable as being the evidence, then not knowing this variable kind of means that we have to uh, compress the front slice and the back slice, and we're kind of mixing together all the information we have about being, having been or not having been in the mosquito-infested area into just a two by two distribution. They kind of get mixed away um, and we can't use this information. But if we know the value of this evidence, we are practically throwing away half of this cube and only using the more precise and detailed distribution that we have. So again, in an intuitive way, when we do Bayesian inference, and this will come back when we, when we think about a base net, Having evidence means we're only taking the part of the distribution that is consistent with evidence. It could be the front of the cube or the back of the cube. Not having evidence means we have to sum over the probability of each of those um, and sum them into uh, the part of the distribution where we're doing, where we have the query variable. So if we were asking, what is the probability of being sick? given that I have 
a positive result for the test. So what's the probability of being sick, given that I'm in this part of the cube? I know nothing about the mosquitoes. I'll have to sum over uh, the front and the back of the cube for this, for this slice. But if I'm asking what's the probability of being sick, given that it's positive and I was in a mosquito infested area, I am actually slicing away the back the front part, so I'm throwing away the back part. And I'm also just looking at the front slice and then I can do the inference basically by just normalizing these two values here in the front top of this cube. So this is kind of important when you think about uh, Bayesian nets and inference and inference sort of like the brute force inference in Bayesian nets. Um, any evidence you have, you can slice away half of the distribution or whatever part of the distribution, depending on how many values your variable has. And any evidence, any evidence you don't have, the hidden variables or um, uh, the ones that are neither evidence nor the query, you have to sum over. So this is what makes the um, amount of summation that you have to do uh, kind of proportional to the amount of hidden variables you have, from them, to the amount of variables you don't have any evidence about. And then perhaps a, a final comment to that would be that um, all of this that we talked about right now is not assuming any kind of um, uh, independence or conditional dependence between the variables. Uh, so you have to do a lot of summation for all of your hidden variables. But if as it is the case in BaseNet, often you have conditional dependence, uh, the, you can save on the summation and we'll see more about this when we talk about uh, variable elimination.